and welcome to our lecture tonight. It is the second lecture in a series that was started within our series last year. Um, it's the that series is a series um, hosted by the Stiftung Städelschule für Baukunst. And last year we heard Matthias Ludwig, who studied here um, <coughs> quite a few years ago on the Günther Bock and he spoke about his own work, also this work that he um, undertook in the, his time in the Städelschule when he studied here, as much as his um, teaching at the university where he's active in the north of Germany. And tonight uh, it is, as you all know, Luis Echegori and to introduce Luis um, I welcome Lars Nixdorf who Finished the Städtische Architecture Klasse in 2005, and Lars also went on to work for UN Studio, um, from where he returned a few years later, and then um, began also teaching in the architecture classes. It's a tight little relationship um, presented here tonight between the Städtische Architecture Class, UN Studio, and eventually also Fra Frankfurt. Lars. Thank you very much, Johan. So, um, as you know, the Stiftung uh, Städelschule für Baukunst is uh, closely related ever since uh, it was founded by Gunther Bock um, to the uh, program and to the architecture class especially, and tries to support the class uh, with several programs and activi activities. Um, actually, uh, we're supporting the Gunther Bock Prize and also this lecture series here. So, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome today Luis Echigori. Uh, to um, be this tonight's uh, lecturer for the uh, for the series, actually not even or only because he's a great architect, as I think, and so a good, very good, a great contributor to the program um, of this series. Also because uh, we are closely related, as a good friend of mine, and we have studied together here also, as Johan already mentioned. So um, Luis originated from uh, Argentina, um, where he also got his professional. Uh, degree as architect um, in the early 2000s uh, and where he also got his first professional skills working as an architect um, actually with Claudio Wegstein, Studio Wegstein, uh, also an alumni of yours uh, who studied here a couple years ago and uh, probably you know him from, um, I think he gave a lecture last year here, uh, showing some project that uh, probably come back today because Louis uh, was working there um, and um, developing a couple of uh, very well-known projects in Argentina around uh, Buenos Aires region and in Buenos Aires actually. Uh, among them, uh, to, to name only a few, is a canopy structure for uh, the riverside in Buenos Aires, the Rio de la Plata, uh, or the uh, Rehabilitation and Disabled Center in Buenos Aires. Um, so in 2004, uh, Luis came to Germany uh, to actually in-depth his um, methodological approach to architecture by studying here in the school. Um, that's also where I got to know him. And uh, he actually was uh, kind of building up his, um, his research agenda in school, kind of um, founding a solid base for his uh, later career as an architect, um, so to say, kind of um, bodybuilding his, uh, his design approach to architecture, uh, which has a kind of a deep interest in, in uh, let's say, a surplus in architecture. Uh, let's say it's the conceptual or the structural um, base of every design that he does and that uh, is, I think, displayed in uh, all the works that he's done ever since. So after, after he was studying here and getting his degree, um, he was staying in Frankfurt actually, close related to the program and um, being guest professor for uh, two years after he finished um, teaching in the program, but also being co-coordinator of the um, program of space of uh, communication, which was um, uh, multidisciplinary um, program that was held up by the time here, culminating in uh, actually the installation, event installation in Porticus, um, a theater of imminence that was designed by um, Ben, uh, Johan, and uh, Luis. Um, after that, he uh, went on to uh, Amsterdam in 2008, become architect and then later associate architect at uh, UN Studio. Uh, they are leading uh, a, a big series of um, 
um, award-winning and also realized projects for you in studio. Um, to mention only again a few, um, there are like international and uh, local Dutch ones. For instance, very nice ones would be uh, Villa Bergen, a private um, uh, villa in, uh, in, um, in the Netherlands, but also international projects like the residential towers, Scots Towers in um, Singapore or um, the Dalian Football Stadium in uh, Dalian, China. So, um, working on international but national parquet also. Um, in 2012, then, uh, he finally um, established his own practice, the uh, studio in Amsterdam, and ever since is uh, participating in the uh, architecture discourse by contributions of competitions, and uh, also has started to uh, realize his own projects, such as the One Column House in Argentina, which is currently under construction. So, I hope you're going to enjoy his lecture as much as I do and see Louis Oeuvre. And uh, yeah, once again, welcome, Louis, and uh, stage is yours. Okay. So, I will, uh, I mean, uh, can I take this? Uh, just uh, just to test I mean wait a minute. okay so uh, thank you very much uh, to the Stiftung and to the SAC and um, basically it's a, it's a pleasure to be here it's such a home environment always uh, to come and uh, uh, for this quiz and uh, to see uh, friends and uh, to let's say contribute, I mean, to a certain uh, discourse on uh, on architecture. Um, what um, what we are going to see tonight, um, it's a series of uh, of projects that are basically um, like a lineage or like a family of, of uh, projects that shares uh, certain um, motivations that I uh, started to get uh, uh, interested in. Uh, uh, as Lars uh, was commenting in the moment uh, that I uh, was here in the in the Stedel, uh, in the Stedel Schule, but uh, also coming from a bit uh, in an unconscious, unconscious uh, manner from uh, the practice uh, that I was uh, exercising in Argentina. So basically, um, uh, my uh, motivation and uh, the, the main topic of, of tonight is what I call these uh, systemic ecologies. Then, uh, and I'm very interested in the, the understanding of uh, matter in a wider range of its uh, concept uh, or meaning of, of the word, uh, ranging from, uh, let's say, uh, digital matter, the physical matter in itself, and um, what uh, are the design uh, processes that can start to trigger the effects and effects coming from matter. In, um, in a way, uh, in order also to, uh, to, to understand this concept of the, uh, systemic uh, ecologies, uh, I'm, uh, I'm joining uh, or I'm interested in the synergy between what I call the ornamental and the structural also being very broad uh, concepts. So within the ornamental uh, I can uh, start to mention, uh, let's say, surface articulations, um, um, certain detailing, uh, certain, uh, let's say, um, specific architectural um, um, devices that start to perform in an ornamental way and on the other side the the structural and uh, not only let's say the the, the low bearing structural capacities of of architecture but also infrastructural uh, moments um, or uh, also as well as, as uh, programmatic ones so basically uh, these two uh, these two uh, concepts uh, are starting to merge and uh, most of the projects that I'm going to show <coughs> basically range the the amplitude uh, between these these two uh, notions of the ornamental and structural so on one corner some of them are purely ornamental while on the other are purely structural and some others share both of them and start to trigger uh, what i consider 
um, uh, interesting moments for a discourse. Um, not long ago, I, the moment that I saw this video was uh, basically the effects that unfold the, the, the video in itself. Um, in a way, some people might uh, consider, I don't know if you know who this uh, person is, it's a male uh, model, a Canadian male model called Rick Genest, also known as the zombie boy. Um, and uh, basically it's a person that is completely tattooed. Uh, with a, with a, <clears throat> but with a particular tattoo that basically uh, he covers his whole body with uh, the skeleton. So um, when I saw this uh, this uh, video, I mean uh, the, the the effects that the, the, the video produces and also the, his persona in itself um, can be from a repulsion to uh, attractiveness uh, and. Uh, and so on. But the interesting thing for me was this uh, notion of, of exposing with uh, ornament the inside towards the outside. No? So, and then basically this, uh, this video in a way it's a kind of um, like almost like going backwards uh, to uh, his former stage of, of nature, let's say. Um, so basically that's also what I was trying to kind of bring in, into discussion between the ornamental and the structural um, and at the same time the ornamental becomes structural in a way. Um, so how do uh, kind of let's say this is a more methodological or almost uh, educational diagram of how do I see um, the, the relations between the, the ornamental, the structural, some program and the unfolding of uh, the effects and, if, and uh, affects of, uh, of matter within uh, a certain uh, group of um, multi-objective uh, design features like for example uh, skin storage, column to bundle, structural program, uh, structural color or structural ornaments or ornamental surface. So basically those are some um, architectural triggers that, uh, that um, uh, I consider that they are embedded in the projects that we are going to see um, uh, afterwards. And at the same time uh, those um, uh, design features are being activated through design strategies like hole-to-hole -hole relations, um, embedding multiplicity within the, the, the each one of the projects or cross-color uh, communications, hybridizations or uh, progressive differentiation within uh, within the, the methods uh, the design methodology applied to the to the projects. So the first of the, the projects that I'm uh, I want to show uh, basically this goes back to 2000. Uh, this was a moment that I, in 1999, I started to work with uh, Claudio Beckstein in uh, Buenos Aires for uh, until 2004 that I came here, and um, basically um, this uh, this building started to trigger me certain interest in the combination of, of uh, this ornament and the, and the structure in itself. Um, I will uh, make a bit of a um, kind of preface uh, to, to this project because you have to really understand the, 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 the context uh, of, uh, of Argentina in the 2000, in probably you know that in 2001 we have a, uh, one of the major economical crises in Argentina and uh, we were in the, in the right moment that basically the, 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 the country or the, the, the state collapsed, collapsed. Uh, we were delivering the tender documents for, for building this, uh, this uh, uh, project. So it was uh, extremely, <clears throat> extremely, we were before when we were designing we were taking certain um, considerations on um, on how to approach to a public building. This is a rehabilitation center for disabled people. It's a 4,000 square meters, uh, three-story high uh, building. And um, in Argentina also public buildings have a connotation or a history that um, basically it's uh, they suffer from uh, different uh, problems and sometimes they are not executed or not fully executed or not executed 
as the uh, design was uh, conceived. So basically what we were um, having in our minds when uh, we got the commission uh, was first, first of all, as a public building, to really embrace what uh, what meant uh, the public for us. This is uh, the um, uh, Lloyd's Bank uh, from uh, Clorindo Testa, an Argentinian architect. Uh, this uh, bank was uh, done in the 60s, uh, 55, 60s. And basically, on the right-hand side, you see a, a diagram, a sectional diagram of, of Clorindos that basically uh, um, he really uh, wants uh, uh, the public to get into the, the, the building. And, um, and basically uh, then uh, designing a certain carcass, a structural uh, concrete carcass, starts to almost like hood the, the, the whole uh, public uh, or the social public uh, space of, of the bank, then liberating uh, the private towards the, the basement and then on the, on the roof side. And uh, the other um, reference uh, that we, we were working also, it's, uh, basically it's a personal obsession that I have with this building. I always try to mention that uh, every time that I am somewhere. Uh, this is the School of Architecture of uh, Villanova Artigas in uh, San Pablo. And basically uh, what you can see, it's a courtyard, uh, empty courtyard with a, with a student um, uh, manifestation. Um, and basically this, uh, there are two main, uh, main uh, features of this uh, building. One is uh, the roof and the, the, let's say, the democratic light as uh, Artigas was uh, calling it. So it's a homogeneous uh, light that goes all uh, through the, the building, throughout the main courtyard, but also to the aulas. And uh, the other thing is that this building does not have a, a door. So there is no uh, concept of uh, or notion of uh, private uh, and uh, public. And basically the, the, the interface uh, between the private and public is done through a series of uh, ramps. So in the moment that you access this, uh, these buildings, you start to go from a public uh, environment in the, let's say, in the street towards the inside uh, in, a, in, a, in a very gradient uh, manner. So what, uh, what we did uh, basically <clears throat> In this, uh, in this project was to take the, the typology of, uh, of a courtyard uh, building uh, kind of in a half, uh, in a half manner. So basically this, these are the, the, the boundaries of, of the lot on the, on the back side. But as I told you before, as, as one of the main inputs or, or parameters to design uh, this building was to work with uh, concrete, poor concrete, uh, and uh, to integrate all the architectural elements within the, the building. So basically, w in Argentina also, it's very common to have a, um, a labor hand that is specialized in concrete and basically uh, s concrete slabs, columns, and then to f just fill in the, 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 the walls with bricks, plaster that, and that, that's a typical way in, uh, of, of, of building, and especially in public, uh, in the public sector where the, where the budget is uh, very reduced. So what we said is that okay, we don't know what's going to happen with the, with this building. Uh, we don't know what the, what's going to happen with the country. We we don't know what's going to be the future of this. So if we use uh, concrete, uh, let's use the concrete for every part of the building. Let's say facades. Um, Ramps, as you said, as you see here, there is a there is a ramp that actually came from the from the um, fire uh, regulations. That we have to have a, a ramp, an exterior ramp, and of course the the, 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 the ramp in order to uh, save the the heights of the floors was extremely uh, long. So we also integrated that ramp towards the towards the facade of the of the buildings of the building, and in that sense we could let's say, uh, almost save the form of the building if anything would happen in the process of building the, 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 the project. So 
Um, basically, all the construction documents that we delivered and also the, the, the agreement and the contract that it was signed with the construction company was saying that basically <coughs> The, the, the carcass has to be done, uh, let's say, almost at once, let's say, in a progressive way, of course, but not with the, uh, let's say, separation of first the slabs and column and then, let's say, projecting concrete towards the, the, these membranes or these shells, uh, but it has to be integrated within the, the pouring of the concrete of the slabs, for example. So basically, that that issue of of, um, of uh, merging all the or articulating all the architectural elements of the building was uh, was a first moment that I started to to really uh, get hooked on this idea of of uh, an integrated system of uh, structure first of all, but then with the articulation of a of a motive of a pattern. Uh, to start to give an ornamental and at the same time also structural um, uh, behaviors to the to the project in itself. So what I'm talking about this motive is uh, this uh, kind of basic. I mean, we took uh, uh, the, the shape of of, uh, of a trapezoid, and that uh, motive was uh, deployed along. In, a, in a, what I call this uh, cross color communication, so along every uh, feature of the project, so as perforated uh, as perforations in the in the main facade of the building as a kind of um, almost yeah ornamental but also at the same time uh, um, uh, shell um, yeah like um, screens uh, for um, certain rooms uh, that the that the building need to have um, and uh, basically this is what what I was telling you that the the, the, the structural capacities or the of the, the the structural elements were starting to merge with the shells and also this pattern started uh, to appear in different scales for perforations for also let's say the the the, um, the design for the interior the patio the interior patio for these uh, screens on the facade uh, let's say for the definition of of these uh, pergolas and here, this is what I was uh, telling you and mentioning the, the, the integration of, of elements like the, these ramps towards the, the, the facade and starting to have a, a really uh, like a, having a consideration for what is an aesthetic problem in the solving of, of in the articulation of these uh, elements. So columns, lab, um, a screen, and then the, the ramp, for example. So in a, in, a, in a way, this uh, motive also started to uh, not only just to uh, uh, articulate the whole uh, design of the, of the building, but starts to give certain scales, start to give different uh, differentiation within the, the functions of the structure. <coughs> yeah, so this, this was for me a, a kind of a first uh, kickoff uh, project that I started to get uh, interested in the, the notion of uh, of um, this merging of the ornamental and the structural, then I, I will I will show um, the two uh, the two projects or the, let's say the, the project of the first year and the second year that I, I did in in the, in the, st in the here in the school as a, as a way also of uh, st starting to merge the the the, the uh, or to bring like a red light throughout the. The, the lecture, and um, in the moment that um, that I uh, was here at school, I started to get interested in in the capacities of surfaces to store information. Um, and basically, uh, I was arguing that uh, every uh, reflective uh, surface have this uh, capacity of uh, uh, storing information, um, but also at the same time. There are certain effects that uh, can be unfolded from uh, reflected, reflected uh, surfaces, such as uh, transparency, uh, reflectiveness, uh, refractiveness, and then uh, um, also the use or understanding of uh, opacities uh, within uh, surface uh, conditions. Um, by that, uh, what I uh, was working with then was with a kind of a, a prototype of, uh, let's say, doubled uh, 
um, double the curvature surfaces and uh, running certain operations of uh, field conditions uh, within um, uh, progressive differentiation within uh, certain prototypes of, of twisted uh, uh, surfaces but also with uh, double, um, double curvature um, units and, uh, and to start to uh, deploy those um, or instantiate those, uh, those uh, geometries within um, a certain amount of, uh, of other surfaces that can start to trigger the effects that I was uh, looking uh, for according to certain uh, degrees of curvature within the, the let's say the host uh, surfaces but at the same time uh, within the within the, the 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 unit in itself and uh, and understanding then as a consequence uh, consequence uh, the defects that um, were uh, coming from uh, certain uh, reflections then uh, certain uh, opacities and uh, transparencies within uh, within a specific uh, object <clears throat> in the in the second year i continued uh, uh, working with this idea of uh, storing information in surfaces and, uh, and uh, merging that with the phenomenon of, uh, of uh, bundling and uh, wave uh, conditions and um, here what, uh, what you are looking is basically a set of, of uh, diagrams that basically uh, shows uh, yeah, the, the, the phenomenon of, of, the phenomenon of uh, wave uh, conditions with the oscillations, certain uh, nodes or inflection points within uh, uh, wave um, patterns, and also certain references of uh, storing, uh, let's say, or pocket spaces uh, within, uh, within uh, let's say, a uh, yeah, modern architecture that's the pavilion of Baldo, Aldo Van Eyck. And uh, his interest basically also on, on these uh, concave convex uh, spaces that uh, basically he was arguing not only in this project but basically also in his uh, project for the university in Berlin that corridors or, and also these pocket spaces are the communal and social uh, spaces. So um, in this, uh, this project basically uh, I'm not going to talk about let's say the program of, of, of this project but I'm, I'm more interested in uh, looking at this as a kind of um, infrastructural landscape that it, uh, prof uh, that it was um, let's say uh, guided through uh, uh, the datum of uh, vertical sections and, uh, and those sections started to activate certain uh, nodes and uh, pocket spaces within the, the programmatic uh, use of the, of the project. So in, in that manner there, were, there, were, there was a continuous uh, differentiated progression of, uh, of, of a set of uh, uh, sections. Um, and this is a kind of <clears throat> back and forth between, let's say, the, 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 the index or the indexicality that these uh, sections were having then applied uh, to a certain uh, geometry and to start to see what were the effects of that geometry in relation to uh, structural capacities and, uh, and programmatic ones. So here there's an example of, of a nodal moment uh, within, the, within this uh, infrastructural uh, landscape building uh, where different flows of, uh, let's say, uh, two uh, spaces started to merge, become one and then start to, uh, let's say, um, divide or, or, or atomize in, in, four, uh, in four other spaces. There's also there was also like a, like a, like an interest in in, try, in trying to embed within the, the structure of, of shells, uh, let's say apart from uh, structural capacities, uh, also let's say infrastructural devices. One could start to think. I mean that uh, there were some uh, nerves or some uh, let's say. Um, veins running through this uh, projects the, the, uh, through this project that started to uh, appear like uh, ducts that also perform as uh, structural with uh, structural capacities <clears throat> so um, 
So, uh, in the moment that uh, be between the first and second year of, of uh, the school here in the, in the stable, um, we took, uh, my partner and myself, uh, we took part on a small competition that the dam was uh, promoting uh, in uh, relation with uh, um, Dialogue in Duncan. That's a um, kind of franchise, uh, call it company, uh, originated in Frankfurt, that basically it's an institution that works with blind people. Um, I don't know if it's still here in, in Frankfurt. It used to be in the Mainzerlandstrasse. I don't know if it's still uh, open. So it's an institution that works with the blind people in order to, uh, let's say, yeah, educate non-blind people how blind people live and what is their, let's say, uh, world. So basically the, the museum, or yeah, I call it museum, there is a set of rooms that are featured with uh, different um, uh, conditions. So for example, there was one that it was com uh, all the furnished as a city life experience, then a country experience, uh, so it's an out outside thing, even though it's within a room, and everything is in complete, complete darkness. darkness. There is no in light whatsoever, you cannot see anything. And the, the interesting thing is that basically you are guided by a blind person throughout all this uh, uh, set of uh, rooms uh, in order to experience uh, darkness. So um, basically what um, this was a very, very interesting uh, challenge for us. I mean, when we said, okay, let's uh, do this competition. Um, uh, because basically we started to um, to work with the, in a very very uh, uh, simple way with uh, the notion of uh, what what could happen if we fill in a room with matter and uh, and of course trying to address the the other senses of uh, of the body except the the sight of course so um, the what we basically this is the, 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 the diagram that rules the whole uh, the whole project and this is uh, w what I'm trying to 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 kind of address or bring into discussion is that uh, almost the project can is reduced to this diagram so this this diagram it's what unfolds the whole project with almost there's no means to describe the project with other representational tools than this. So basically we were hooked on, on, on let's say, on, the, on notions of indexicality and, uh, and what I mean by that is basically is to start to understand a, a discrete uh, section. It was a kind of, yeah, 3.5 uh, centimeters uh, diameter circular section. And, um, but we wanted to go into um, another state of indexicality, and that's what uh, basically it's known as hyperindexical, uh, that is an exacerbation of the indexical through um, uh, affects. So um, how do you do that? It's uh, in order uh, by, let's say, applying to uh, these uh, sections notions of um, uh, intensities through different qualities of, of materials. So what we did was to have only just, let's say, one diameter with uh, different sections that would come from a series of materials. So what we were proposing was a series of, uh, of uh, to fill in the, the whole space. We are talking about a room half of the size of this aula, it's 50 square meters more or less. Um, so to fill in the, the, the whole uh, room with uh, mat mat material poles hung from the roof, let's say, or from the ceiling. Um, and uh, basically, uh, when I'm talking about these hyperindexical moments, and, and uh, extensive and uh, intensive uh, qualities and, and, and quantities of, of the material. Uh, what I'm talking is about, let's say, the mapping of, uh, let's say, different uh, qualities here. It's, uh, yeah, the flexibility of, of these uh, rods. Then the temperature of the materials of these rods. Then the weight 
and then the height. So uh, basically, we generated a series of maps with uh, these four parameters, and um, one is talking about the, 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 the height until when they are starting to, to go down, let's say, close to the floor. The other one is about the flexibility, so in order to, to make this, let's say, that you can go through matter, we have to chop down the, the, these poles within a certain length. And then the decision of using six different materials uh, will give us different temperatures. So we were ranging from aluminum uh, tubes to uh, bamboo rods passing through uh, foam uh, rods, uh, wooden rods, then um, and cork rods, and so on. So we were having organic, inorganic, cold, warm materials, different types of textures. And then for you have to, to bear in mind that this was a um, kind of very exhausting project because uh, in the moment that we won this competition, it has to be built and they, they gave us really a low budget for this. And uh, it has to be realized uh, within a, a time frame of two weeks. So um, basically what we delivered for construction document, it's also what you see here. And this was the whole, uh, the whole uh, thing. So there was no need also to, to almost draw sections or, or uh, yeah, there were no elevations whatsoever. It's an interior project. And basically here you have the, the, the six uh, palettes of each one of the different materials. Then the length uh, of the rods, the, the distances of upon which uh, the, the, the element or the material has to be cut and the number of this amount of, of, uh, of uh, rods. And on the other side you see a, a kind of a projected ceiling plan where we were having like a, like a grid um, uh, instantiated uh, upon 15 centimeters each and then uh, dividing that according to a kind of grid where they were hanging. So there's a combination of colors that were in relation to materials but also to uh, a different uh, mapping of, uh, of uh, heights. So basically then the, the people who were assembling this, they were checking, okay, we have to do, I don't know, like 80, 90 uh, poles of this type, so ever. Then having that uh, in a storage place and then started to knot each one of, of these uh, lines into a, I don't know how it's, I know it in, in German, but it's Gitterrost, it's like a grid, a metallic grid that it was hung from the, from the ceiling. So basically it took us almost 19 days to, to tied up all these um, uh, elements and almost one day, a couple of hours to assemble the whole, uh, the whole thing. So basically, actually this slide should, not, should be all black. You know? I mean, this is the sound that it was happening inside. And, and basically what the, 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 the client asked us was because we have an, an entrance and an exit of this room. And basically what they told us was you just have to make one continuous material that guide the people from the entry to the exit and that material was the, the bamboo. So that the people could start to follow only just bamboo, even though that you can go everywhere, you know, but then to find out the exit you have to follow the bamboo. So, I mean, and this was what was happening there when you were inside and in the moment that there were more people coming in it was more, <coughs> let's say, uh, Disturbing. <coughs> Sorry. So, so the next uh, the next project um, this uh, called uh, branching uh, house. Um, it was also this is a, a small project for a. Uh, residential extension in, in Argentina and um, we worked uh, with uh, Johan uh, on this project, also uh, Oliver Tesman uh, and uh, Anton uh, 
we were working together on this project and also with the Bollinger and Grumman uh, as uh, structural, uh, let's say, consultants uh, from, uh, yeah, for, uh, for trying to articulate uh, the, the notions of, of this project. So basically, um, in, this, um, in this project, um, uh, here you can see also that each one of the project has this type of, of uh, let's say, uh, tax that uh, those are the tax that I was talking be before in, in relation to the to the design uh, features, and um, <clears throat> basically we were uh, working with a with a branching system uh, to generate this uh, this project. So basically, uh, just to give you a bit of a context, this is a summer uh, house in, uh, in the Patagonia. This is, uh, this is the lake, there's a, there's a small peninsula, and the lot, it's uh, <clears throat> basically on the shore, it's a very deep lot, it's uh, 60, square, 60 by 12 uh, meters, <coughs> and uh, it gives to the shore of, of the lake, so here, here would be the, the lake. <coughs> so the problem with this uh, house, it, it's, it was that it was a very old uh, house. The, the functionality of this house was not uh, very good, and then the client wanted to extend the, the house. And um, as a kind of uh, very simple uh, way to put it, I mean, what we what we said was basically to divide the house. This is basically the footprint of the existing house, where everything was in there, like the public and the private areas. And what we said is, okay, we're going to liberate and uh, empty the, 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 the back or the, 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 the old house and let it uh, just be the private areas with two big uh, rooms and then to start to <coughs> generate a, a roof that it will be the, the, the public uh, area with the kitchen kind of lounge area or living room or whatsoever. So basically, <coughs> What we uh, this is this is what uh, what I was uh, was telling you before. I mean, let's say in a very clear way to say private areas and then the public areas towards the lake, uh, because basically as a, as a summer house, the, the 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 way of living this house is basically outside and under a roof. I mean, there's a there's a, basically it's used three months or two months a year in, in summer, and basically you spend it throughout the in, in the outside you almost don't don't use uh, the, the the bedroom just uh, at night for for sleeping but the the, the interesting thing about it uh, was uh, this notion of, of a center point uh, this uh, center point was conceived uh, as a kind of <coughs> um, uh, um, uh, let's say fireplace and also the fireplace brings or oh, it's a kind of a metaphor for uh, has uh, social connotations i mean we know it also from from uh, Wright, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, that he was also arguing that around the fireplace is the place where um, social life uh, uh, occur so basically we took uh, we took this moment of of a, of a center point decide to have a, a fireplace in this in this area and then through um, an iteration of of uh, digital processes applied to um, uh, let's say a um, modified uh, uh, l system structure of uh, bran branching uh, structure we started to uh, investigate and research on the structural capacities that could start to unfold in order to uh, become a structure and therefore also uh, bring, uh, bring the notion of a, of a roof and the continuation of the, the, existing, uh, of the existing house. <coughs> so what, um, what this uh, slide shows basically is the manipulation of, of, uh, of this geometry throughout uh, a host, a host uh, surface it, that was populated with a branching system with a certain aleatory, uh, um, let's say, uh, condition between the, the branches and the iterations of each one of the, the generations of the, of the branching. So basically, in the, actually this, this is also an interesting project in the sense of we were running hundreds of, of iterations of this structure. Each one of them were completely different. 
and the the problem with uh, basically uh, yeah digital uh, behaviors is the, the big question of okay when when to stop you know and which one is uh, the, the right one which which one is the valid one how do you validate a certain um, form and then after running um, uh, many many iterations of this uh, of this script then basically there was a kind of architectural let's say eye and design uh, let's say uh, criticality within what we were receiving and start to the pure and catalog the the different uh, um, uh, let's say um, families of, of structures that we were um, uh, obtaining so what you were see, where you are seeing here it's basically also set of, of, uh, of four only just uh, four iterations each one of them they have different parameters that does start to control and have and start to also uh, unfold different types of uh, spatial qualities um, and at the same time uh, structural behaviors when when we let's say got into a into a more um, a, into a scheme that also could start to fit our ambitions from uh, the the brief in itself um, then we started to also uh, bring back a certain contextual labor work into the the, the project uh, and by saying that is uh, let's say also as i told you this is in argentina the labor hand in this moment is uh, or in this area is not so qualified so we have to really uh, start to see how this structure could start to uh, come to a, a more, um, let's say, discreet and also controlled manner. Um, so basically, what you are seeing, seeing here, it's uh, the, the one of the, the variations that was uh, fitting the most to, to our to the brief, and also to structural conditions, and um, and basically. What we were doing here was to, to understand and, and to start to uh, research on uh, the sectional moments within uh, within the within the structure. So basically, um, having a, a base moment where the, the let's say the four bundles of uh, ramifications were coming together, um, um, having a grounding condition that start to delimit the, the fireplace then uh, understanding a bundling effect that uh, will start to unfold the ramification and then the relation of a certain space here there was a connection to the house with a kind of possible mezzanine in the future and then the connection uh, and the the um, uh, yeah the uh, the structural um, behavior with the uh, with the roof uh, in itself So each one of, basically, if, if you understand the, the, the horizontal sections of, of this structure, you also start to, uh, to read different uh, moments and uh, different conditions. And, um, and also we were speculating on uh, how uh, these bundles could, could start to uh, get uh, materialized. Um, let's say in a kind of uh, six uh, string bundle, five in a, a symmetric uh, way or an asymmetric way, depending on the leaning or let's say inclination of, of, uh, of these structures, you are gonna have uh, different sections of, of, the, of the tubes. Uh, also starting to give certain space between the tubes in order to increase the inertia, structural inertia within the, stru within the, the, the structural capacities of it, or to have, like, let's say, a connection uh, and also, like, let's say, reaming the, the six bundles or having a, an internal connection or what would happen if these bundles start to, to get, uh, let's say, further away from themselves. Um, so this is uh, this is, uh, approximate uh, visualization of the approximation of the of the project, and um, basically now you will uh, you will see that the, the projects that are coming now they are going to start to um, uh, have 
common um, issues from the previous ones. Um, and that's how I, I mean, the, 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 the presentation is quite chronological, but at the same time, uh, also that gives also a certain input from one project to the other, that in a way, in that moment when, the, when for example, this project, you all know, uh, it's uh, the, the thing or the, or the theater of immanence was articulated, we were having in also in the back of our minds a bit the, the previous project that I show of, the, of this lake house. So, um, as a brief uh, introduction to this uh, project, I think it's necessary to say, I mean, that this is a, um, a project that a lot of people uh, were acting and, and, uh, and were taking part. Uh, this was a, a project conceived for the finish of the, the one-year interdisciplinary project, the Space of Communications, that was sponsored by uh, T-Mobile in relation with uh, the school. And um, Johan uh, was uh, the director, and I was uh, coordinating also the, the program. And um, the main goal was to invite uh, a series of artists and architects in order to speculate on the problem or the, the phenomenon, of, phenomenon of communication throughout a one year long program scheduled with a series of uh, workshops that were hosted by uh, also other artists like Peter Hagdal and uh, let's say our godfather for this project uh, Sanford Quinter and uh, other people so we invited uh, all the participants uh, many times throughout the year and set a series of workshops to work out through. So in the in the end of uh, by the end of this project, um, there was uh, the, the idea to uh, to also start to um, integrate or let's say participate within the, the exhibitions in the Porticus uh, space, the gallery in uh, here in Frankfurt, and that um, also Ben uh, would uh, would join and, uh, and give a, a kind of. Uh, full, uh, let's say, close uh, moment for the whole project. And um, so uh, this is a kind of a first diagram of the project, but you also have to understand that this uh, in interdisciplinary project was by the end, we started, let's say, with nine artists, nine architects, I think, and by the end of the, the program in itself uh, of the, the, the year, um, they were uh, almost uh, around 12 or 13 people that also they started to, to team up together. So in the end we have around eight to nine groups and um, what it was part of the, of the program was that each one of these groups or artists and architects would also exhibit what they have produced throughout the year. So, um, in one of our last uh, workshops with, uh, with uh, Sanford, uh, Quinter, I remember that he said, ah, okay, well, we, have to, we have to do a hub, an informational hub, a communicational hub, almost like a cerebellum, like the idea of, of having a condensation of possible communication, almost like a like a, like a set of, uh, or, or like an event space where social encounter could take place. And at the same time, we have these nine projects to exhibit. So uh, on one side, we have nine almost independent individual projects. And on the same time, we have <clears throat> the notion of the social with the many, let's say. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, uh, what uh, what we continue working uh, was uh, with um, with the notion of uh, of a branching system, let's say. But at the same time, um, uh, that could start to gather these two first inputs, let's say, of um, of the many, the social, and then the individual. So, um, as probably you all know, the, the space of the Porticus Gallery, it's a, it's a kind of white box of 
8 meters uh, wide and 12 uh, long and uh, with a kind of almost like uh, triple height uh, with a with a mezzanine at the half of the of the space this this would be the entrance from the Alte Brücke so um, basically I think this uh, the, 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 the idea was to try to how to integrate both dilemmas of the many and the and the and the different, uh, the nine different projects in one uh, integrated uh, object, let's say. So um, by working with, uh, with uh, an idea of a, of a branching structure and let's say the, the notion of the sectional datum, we can actually divide the, the height of the, of the gallery in two having like a totally almost like a free plan for the ground level and then generating a roof that starts to fall down and start to make a kind of almost theatrical space for the communal gathering of, of people. <laughs> Also, we were we were at the same moment, um, let's say, making our own brief of what this uh, event would uh, would be. So we were uh, thinking of uh, making lectures, bringing DJs, making art uh, ex uh, in, uh, installations within the within the space. And um, by by depuring, let's say, the the, the main concept that uh, basically we have this, uh, this porous structure, um, we came uh, to this final geometry that basically what you see here is uh, that the ground level, actually it's totally free as I told you before, but the projections of these uh, perforations or these uh, holes within the cells of the branching system basically allows us to start to identify local moments where the artist could start to bring their, uh, their objects. So uh, the whole structure was articulated upon a series of, of eight to nine holes that actually demarcates the place where individual, the individual projects are going to be exhibited on the ground floor. But at the same time, the, the, the structure on the second level is the one that starts to host the, the moments for uh, um, a social interaction. So this was uh, uh, one of the, I think it was in the, yeah, in the opening day where uh, also Sanford was giving a lecture and then here you see basically the, the two datums of, of basically the, the ground level. Here you cannot see very much but there were the podest for each one of the artists or, or the projects and then basically to start to uh, store information within the, the, the cells two or three of the cells uh, and basically making a stage, a, the a theatrical stage for the, for the, um, for the project. I have to make a kind of, kind of parenthesis within, the, within this project because when we were designing this also uh, we wanted to collaborate with MESO you probably all know uh, MESO from, uh, from here and uh, we we worked uh, with them within uh, two of their departments that they have. One is the media department and then the other one was uh, the, web, uh, the web design uh, department. And basically we also wanted to integrate them then within, the, within the project. And, um, and this is also, I mean if I look in a retrospective way, this project, this is a project that basically I think that integrates in the integrates in the best way the notion of the ornamental and the structural. And um, what we wanted to start to to do was to activate with uh, with a certain um, projections uh, the surfaces of 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 this uh, object. So basically, the the structure of the object was finished in a. In a, I mean, everything was white, but basically the atmosphere and the mood of the whole exhibition would come also from these uh, projections. Uh, these are um, 
basically uh, some of the ideas that we were having in the beginning of the of the uh, work the, the collaborative work with uh, with meso where we started to uh, understand the, the the thickness of these uh, rings as the possible areas or surfaces where certain um, masked uh, projections could start to uh, came into play uh, but due to a budget reason, it was uh, very, uh, uh, it was almost impossible to use this, uh, so um, such an amount of projectors in order to uh, start to uh, uh, trigger uh, these uh, these surfaces. So this is um, this was what Meso was uh, delivering us in the moment that we said that we wanted to work with. Uh, with these uh, areas of the or the thickness of these uh, rings, and what you see here, or what Meso was uh, interested in producing, was a set of eight or nine uh, patterns that basically uh, were going to be controlled interactively throughout the use of a website. So. That's uh, the, the integration between the, the physical object, the projective the image, and then the, let's say, the internet. Uh, there was a camera that was streaming live on the top of this, uh, of, uh, on the ceiling of the Galleria. And basically, uh, this, uh, this camera then was, or the, this stream was uh, forward then to the space of communication um, website, and in the moment that the users start to enter the, the, um, the page, there were some sliders that the users can start to interact and start to, let's say, move, and then the patterns of the projections were going to be affected. That is what you saw in the, in the, in the, um, in the animation before, these were some uh, some of the some of the tests that Meso were producing on our digital model, and uh, this was also I mean this was in the moment that we were building this uh, this project. Also, this project was built in two weeks' time. Uh, it was completely uh, extremely uh, uh, time uh, cooking uh, thing. It was complete uh, pressure. Uh, there was a lot of pressure in this, involved in this project. We were working during the day with a constructor or the carpenter that was building this uh, this project, and then after six o'clock, then uh, or even later, then the constructor was leaving, and then all the meso guys and us we were there in order to start to um, let's say match the digital with the physical. <coughs> and here there are some uh, some images of the. Of the final uh, project. So here you see, I mean, there were four projectors on each one of the corners of the Galleria, and uh, basically what we decided in the end with these four projectors, projectors was to mask only just the, the the top surface of the of the installation. And basically, this is this is for me the the, the great moment of the, the the project. I mean, if you see it from a point of view of, of moods or atmospheres within the range of these eight or ten motifs or, or families of, of motifs, the, the atmosphere of the whole gallery was completely, completely different. So from warm conditions to uh, very abstract uh, and uh, colder moments. And don't forget that these motifs were, uh, um, let's say, uh, active. I mean, they, they were not uh, fixed, so there were all these patterns were uh, let's say uh, moving along the, the surface of the of the project, and also I, the, there was an interesting moment that they, through the because of the, the length of the projection towards the surface to where it was projected. I mean the the, the pixelation and the detailing of, of the, the light were having two different types of scales. I mean one is basically this uh, atmospheric scale, but then the 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 patterning that it was projected onto the the um, and the pixel of the light within the surface was giving another type of effect on the on the surface. And here you see the the, the, the two moments, let's say the, the upper uh, social uh, space 
uh, ready for lectures or um, DJ sessions and then on the bottom part each one of these uh, pedestals uh, with the, with the uh, projects from, uh, from the group of artists and architects. So you see also here, almost in the same lecture or, or discussion panel, the two different types of, of uh, patterns giving different atmospheres to the, to the space. This is, a, this is a very small project that uh, we were asked uh, to uh, do a, a master plan for social housing in Portugal. And uh, basically what I want to uh, uh, address with this project, it's uh, the, the notion of, um, of the social, uh, or social spaces. Um, and uh, what we were uh, interested here was to uh, start with a, with, a, with a kind of patio courtyard uh, typology of a house and then um, and having a concept of the three bands, what we were calling the three bands. So basically the second band is uh, the, the, the house in itself, but they all, also the house would have uh, a private open uh, patio that is part of the house. And next to it, we were adding a communal uh, space. So this is a, a space, let's say, that it's totally public, and this is, let's say, private, this is an open space, uh, private uh, to the house. And in the combination of these uh, three bands, we came up with a prototype with a, with a pivoting point in the, in the center of, of, of the three bands that could start to unfold different uh, characteristics in the massing of, the, of uh, this um, housing. So in, the, in a very schematic way, the, the pivot uh, point and the, let's say, the, also the branching of these uh, wings would start to uh, control and uh, activate different types of uh, communal spaces within the repetition of the units, but also at the same time the, the internal patio of the house. This house were having uh, um, two floors. And, uh, and basically this uh, notion of, of, uh, of a prototype and, and uh, almost like a genotype where you can unfold uh, a differentiated amount of uh, almost infinite um, set of um, possible uh, housing um, allows us to uh, understand uh, the potential of, of the prototype within the, the prototype in itself having uh, internal patios in the, in the second floor, having a pass, a passage through uh, the, the proliferation of uh, a set of units, um, but then applied to, uh, to the master plan in itself, where we, had to, uh, uh, we were having a concept of embracing um, these units within, also in a, in a methodolo methodological, um, cross-scalar communication um, uh, ways uh, the different types of, of, of the units within this, um, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, like cells. <clears throat> so basically this is also like a, like a landscape uh, master plan that, um, that we only had to intervene in, in, in this area, but it also can start to unfold towards neighbor, the, neighbor, um, uh, the neighboring context. So this is, um, this is a kind of a continuation of the second part of the, of the, the, the lake house that I was showing before. Um, so, and uh, when I, when I was telling you about the, 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 other pro, the, the other version or the other moment of, no version, but the other moment of the project before, um, basically uh, the, this is a very, very uh, nice image of the, of the notion of, of, the, of the fireplace. Um, 
I guess that this image was taken in uh, somewhere in the, in, in the States where let's say balloon frame, wooden balloon frame uh, houses, if they are burned, the only thing that uh, remains is a uh, is the fireplace and, uh, and the combination or the, the let's say the, 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 the relation to a, to a tree. So um, this project also, uh, I mean, it's the continuation of my interest in uh, this kind of multi-objective uh, uh, design features, like for example uh, these columns. That, uh, this is a project also of Villanova Artigas, that uh, basically these columns start to open themselves, become, uh, um, let's say, um, skylights. Um, so they start to perform more than one function uh, uh, at the time. And of course, uh, we all know the, the um, the terminal, uh, the airport terminal in the in uh, New York, and uh, and understanding also the the moments of, I mean where where the structure starts to become something else than the structure. Huh? So I mean it's kind of the same uh, type of, of uh, spatial relations. There are these uh, also skylight, but in the moment I mean it becomes like a window that start to frame different views and at the same time the structure becomes furniture some pocket spaces within the within the, these moments um, so basically what we are looking now it's the same uh, plan as the 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 branching house it's the same project but in another phase so basically the client uh, went uh, more um, strict on 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 the um, materialization of the of the project in itself and, and they say okay we have to build this uh, so we took uh, another um, another strategy that basically was to leave uh, the, the, the main programmatic st strategy was the same I mean as before to uh, leave the old or uh, the, the actual house only just for the private area with two bedrooms and a bathroom a complete bathroom then uh, and then to separate through a kind of internal the internal patio uh, the public area so basically what you see here this tilted rectangle is a, is a one one uh, full uh, one continuous space with a kitchen dining and then a lounge area all around one single column um, in a way uh, this uh, this set of, of or the, the, the brief basically also uh, uh, what we were taking into account was to um, benefit from uh, we wanted to have the best views towards the, the lake and at the same time to get really close to the volumes of the neighbor houses because these ne two neighbor houses were built after this one and this uh, these volumes or the massing was too much let's say closer to the lake and and the and the house in itself was lacking or of the best vistas because of this basically the the two uh, uh, boundary uh, walls so what we did was just to approximate this volume towards the uh, towards the, the the vistas and to skew it in relation to to get hooked on on the two ends of the the boundary walls so basically the, the, the project is articulated on, on just one feature that it's this, uh, this set of, or this pair of, of columns. It, this, is our, uh, this, this is a pair of ruler surface, surfaces. Um, and basically we wanted to integrate and to, let's say, put the whole effort of, 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 the, of the architecture within this, this element. So basically, uh, this element not only performs the load-bearing capacities of the structure, but also starts to articulate the different spaces within the house, also the relations between the lake, the patio, and, uh, and a tree that uh, it's there on the side. And uh, also to integrate a fireplace, a storage, and then also to have the drainage for uh, water, for rainwater, through or uh, within the the twisted uh, surfaces. 
So this is uh, this is one of the this is, uh, kind of interior image. And as I told you before, I mean uh, the way of living this uh, this summer house basically is in a, it's an outside, and you can argue that basically this is just a roof. Okay, I consider this is more than a roof, but uh, basically it's it's a it's a it's a roof that extends from a neighboring wall to neighboring wall with uh, with this with this element. So here, here we start to see also the relation with an existing, uh, with an existing um, uh, tree, and uh, and basically also the the, the position of, of this uh, column it's uh, strategically uh, designed in relation to a lounge area, dining, and the and the kitchen. And for the structure, we were talking in, in discussions with the, the structural engineer. What we uh, wanted also to uh, to do was to let's say to activate um, the the beams in relation to optimize and to have a full benefit of of the the structure in itself. So of course uh, the the major beams that were running from uh, boundary neighbor boundary to the other neighbor boundary we invert those beams up uh, uh, up uh, to have a complete uh, almost like a free ceiling uh, without beams and basically then the these uh, pairs of beams were going to be uh, leaning on a, on another beam that basically have um, different functions according to the to the functionality of the house. So in the in the side um, towards the the kitchen, this uh, this beam basically has a height of 90 centimeters to address a, a kitchen uh, top, uh, and on the other side it's 40 centimeters to uh, to take uh, care of, of a sitting bench. Within uh, within the lounge the lounge area, <coughs> basically this uh, this is almost like like bracketing uh, the the space within the two horizontal datums uh, and making a, a complete uh, let's say stress on the vistas and uh, within and also at the same time th with the lateral um, lateral. Uh, walls of the neighbors so basically uh, the two uh, or the space between beams it's going to be let's say uh, filled with a load uh, load bearing uh, mansory uh, brick wall with a certain pattern where we don't need stress and uh, within, uh, and uh, with closed uh, moments where, where where we need stress to to go down also so i mean the, the walls basically are serving also for uh, structural uh, uh, purposes. So um, yeah, this is this is uh, basically the, the longitudinal and the uh, cross section throughout the project, and the, and the the notion of these differentiated beams that are working uh, for different uh, functions. Another visualization of the project. And basically, these are the this is uh, the document for um, constructing the for building the the twisted uh, uh, surfaces in uh, concrete. Um, as I told you, these are ruled surfaces. So basically, here you see uh, 21 or 22 sections uh, every 10 centimeters, um, and basically the pair. Each one of these uh, surfaces is identical to the next one, so there's a standardization within the, the system, and basically everything it's um, it's uh, let's say uh, geometrized through uh, straight lines, and um, and the discussion or the ongoing discussion with the constructor is how to how to start to pour or how to start to build up the molds for the for the twisted surfaces, and then. Basically, the, the idea that we are going to uh, go uh, through it's almost like a rib uh, structure that starts to, um, um, uh, to, to make basically two, two instances according to the moments where we are pulling the concrete and, uh, and basically start to have a, a sectional um, um, 
fins or backbone uh, structure that uh, then through a layering of very uh, thin and malleable um, uh, plywood uh, layers, one could start uh, to describe the, the curvature of, of, uh, of, uh, of the surfaces. So and now we are now in the, in the right moment. They they are uh, starting to lay down the metal work for the found the foundations of the of the um, of the column. Okay, so we are in the last two projects. This uh, was a competition entry for a library in Korea. Um, this is a public library in Korea. And uh, basically, I mean, uh, you will see also, I mean, there's a, there, even though that it's not so, um, not so literal, the, the use of a, of a branching uh, structure, uh, basically, this is a continuation of almost like the, the, the theater of, of immanence in a way. Uh, but uh, in another scale of a project with another type of, of program and and so on. So the main uh, the main issue for the the briefing of this competition was uh, to start to to uh, discuss the idea of what is a library today. And uh, what we said uh, um, it was that basically what we wanted to to address was the the idea of of a living room. Uh, that basically the living room is the kind of the most private part of a, of a house in the social uh, way uh, or in the social understanding and uh, basically what would happen if we uh, extrapolate that public uh, or this uh, this living room into a public building and to start to have like almost like a core uh, of uh, public life within uh, within uh, the the library that could start to be activated by a series of different uh, event uh, program that could happen within this uh, this space at the same time the the, the brief was uh, having um, four different types of um, areas for um, them thematizing the, the the books um, and uh, so we wrap around the the living uh, the living room area in the in the center with this uh, uh, double height, uh, double height spaces, framing also views to to the exterior, exterior, but also at the same time making a, 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 a identity towards each one of the of the the wings, the four wings of the project, and then um, having uh, like other uh, programmatic spaces below and, and above the the main uh, public space and at the same time then wrapping the the whole structure with a pvc membrane that starts to have a, a connotation with uh, certain geometries of, of pagodas but also at the same time making a, some some strangeness in uh, in the uh, way that the object or the the, the building it's being perceived so basically, uh, yeah, this is a diagrammatic um, pro or programmatic diagram uh, showing the, the, the two levels uh, of the, the main living room uh, lounge area surrounded by mezzanine of each one of these uh, four um, wings. And, and the, main, the main space as a kind of very flexible uh, plateau where different uh, events or program can happen. So, I mean, during also we could activate this uh, library um, beyond the, the working hours and then start to bring another type of program at night, like, for example, uh, projecting uh, or having a cinema, theater, uh, lectures, etc. Each one of the, the the wings was also characterized, or let's say, uh, giving identity throughout the different types of uh, or four different types of uh, colors in the within the shelves. 
So also like a kind of viewing or um, almost like a signature wayfinding throughout the the library. And then um, also we were uh, trying to have this notion of, of how the building could become iconic within night uh, and uh, what would happen if we could backlight the, the PVC membrane as a kind of uh, almost oriental uh, um, rice paper uh, lamp. This is the last project uh, that I'm uh, going to show and this is a project that we did uh, together with uh, Lars. Uh, this is the entry competition for the Museum of the Bayern uh, History in uh, Regensburg. And this site is uh, it's a kind of it's a, it's a UNESCO heritage uh, site. It's uh, protected and uh, basically this is uh, this is what we encounter, or this is what uh, Regen Regenburg uh, is. Basically, there's uh, St. Paul Cathedral uh, here, and there's the Donau River. And um, one of the main um, points for the, or what it was really uh, one of the main issues for us, for the competition, was how to integrate this, uh, the new uh, building within uh, within the, the site and within the city. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is the lot that was uh, given by the city and then there is an, another part of the, of the lot that uh, we have also to consider. There were some remaining um, uh, buildings or there were some buildings that we have to uh, keep intact. And here you, you see the, the relation between the river, the city and the and the St. Paul Cathedral there. Um, the three main parameters for, uh, for working out the, the, the project basically was the, the, the understanding of, of, of the program uh, in relation to the context, then the articulation of, uh, of the massing within, uh, within the, the context, and then uh, let's say uh, the definition of uh, of the facade for the for the massing. Um, so this we are talking about of a building of around uh, nine to ten thousand square meters, and uh, basically what uh, we got uh, very interested was in the drainage of the tissue of uh, or the urban tissue of the of the city and uh, also the texture and color of all these uh, tilted uh, roofs within the within the urban fabric um, and then our preoccupation started to uh, lie uh, down in, in relation of how to articulate such a big mass within the within the site and to start to give uh, answer and uh, some uh, connections towards the, the cathedral and the promenade of the Danau and uh, also to start to activate uh, or to complement uh, the, the activity of a, um, a market uh, that it's uh, taking part on Saturdays. So basically <clears throat> what um, in this integration of these uh, three parameters of program, um, massing and uh, and uh, skin, let's say. What we were working was trying to, um, what we worked was trying to understand the, the, the project within basically two moments, uh, also given uh, by the brief, the museum in itself, and then there was a, a part for offices and a media tech that has to have a different address from the museum. And then to start to um, uh, get certain context uh, lines that start to articulate the massing and to start to break the massing um, in, a, in, a, in a way that basically have a, like a standardized uh, module for the structure but at the same time uh, articulates the, the whole roof or massing uh, of the building. So basically, we were faceting, or we were interested in the continuation of, of the notion of this 
roof or the texture of these roofs and how this roof can start to, un let's say, fold in itself and start to give a, a different type of, of relations towards the, the promenade, uh, um, uh, giving relations towards the, the, um, the cathedral. and to the uh, existing uh, buildings that we have to uh, keep. So in a, in a kind of in a programmatic uh, way, the, the, the um, wayfinding and the, the interior circulation of the, of the project basically uh, was driven by, by, a, by a continuous uh, loop that goes from uh, ground floor and everything is articulated within a main uh, atrium uh, that it was uh, uh, had, had a sky uh, uh, sky window and uh, let's say from the um, from the ground floor one could start to travel through the uh, through the uh, a horizontal um, uh, fenestration or window towards the Dana River going to the um, um, temporary exhibition and then going to the second floor where the permanent exhibition was um, uh, had to be. Um, and also at the same time giving, uh, giving a, a, a relation not only to the river but to the, to the cathedral in, it, uh, in itself and, and let's say um, bringing back uh, certain uh, context uh, relations inside the the building, and the the next the next uh, preoccupation was the articulation of the of the facade, and uh, how can we start to uh, get a um, a continuous but um, standardized system with a certain um, um, care on um, basically. Uh, giving answer to different types of scales. Basically, uh, we wanted to uh, to break down from a kind of macro scale, going to a meso scale, and then a micro scale within the patterning of the facade. And uh, what we uh, used was a geometry that allows us to have a recursive system that, in the <coughs> let's say, in the um, instantiation of of this uh, geometry one could start to have three different types of scales within the, the unfolding of, of, the, of the envelope of the building. But at the same time, we have to work with, um, or we wanted to work with, um, with the texture and, and color uh, given from the context and we choose uh, um, fiber cement uh, panels from a reader um, that basically uh, also comes with a spectrum of, of different uh, colors and, and textures. And uh, within the, the, the basic geometry of, of the, the, the main uh, uh, unit for the, for the, the facade uh, articulation, actually we could start to standardize each one of these elements and just by mirroring and uh, making combinations of four different colors, one could start to have um, uh, these different types of scales within the modules of the, of the envelope of the, of the building. So basically the, the, the textures uh, or the darker textures start to talk about a macro scale that starts to uh, almost like uh, get in a kind of integration almost in a camouflage way within the, the context and towards uh, the areas that were more uh, in relation to the promenade there were other types of patterns almost like with a three-dimensional relief uh, breaking down the, the monumental scale and bringing more human scale throughout the also the, the massing uh, or the folding of the, the massing. Okay, I think it's... Uh, this is it.